you know, March 23rd, we were talking and we said all the stuff that's happening. And I asked you, did the Fed get it right? You said Fed and Treasury, they got it right and that things would pick up from here. I don't know if you thought you might be this right, but the market's pretty much <laughs> bottoming right then and coming up. I mean, so look into your crystal ball. What do you see happening now? I think things look good now, even though they're giddy. And reflecting back on what was going on back in March, you're a lawyer, I'll use a legal term. It was a macro force majeure event. It was an act of God. And the private sector really couldn't deal with such a macro force majeure event. Only our government could. And we could see that our government was responding with an all-in approach of the Fed and the Treasury acting as one. Uh, and that was the right response. I thought it would work. Uh, and I thought it would turn the market. And effectively, that's what happened. Well, they were really slow when we talked about it in 2007 and 2008. Maybe they learned their lesson. They reacted. I think your word was boldly this time. But listen, we've got a new incoming administration. We're, we're going to have a new Treasury head, likely Janet Yellen. We could have changeover, certainly, at the Federal Reserve. From the names, names you know, by the way, the names that you're hearing and the names you know, are you confident that any new administration, Treasury, Fed, whatever it might be, may be just as dovish or perhaps even more so? I am very enthusiastic, and that's putting it mildly, about uh, President-elect Biden's selection of Janet Yellen to run Treasury. Uh, it was truly an inspired choice, uh, and I think the cooperation between uh, the Fed and the Treasury going forward in the new administration uh, will be exquisite. Uh, so I have no concerns on that front whatsoever after the inauguration. It's a matter of getting between here and there, quite frankly, uh, on Treasury Fed cooperation. The Fed's mandate, one of them too, is to maximize employment. We forget about that. And we forget also, and we shouldn't, that there are millions of people that are unemployed. Travel and hospitality and leisure, depression right now, Paul. We know that. Do you believe the Federal Reserve is going to keep that front end of the yield curve pretty much just tacked right on zero for as long as they need to get employment up, even if that takes years? In other words, could we have a Fed funds rate below 1% and a 10-year yield below 1% or 1.5% for 5 to 10 years to come? Certainly for the next five years, I think would be a reasonable expectation. And I can't stress enough how important the Fed's strategic framework review was, which was announced in August and then uh, fine-tuned uh, in September, when the Fed did a huge epic turn to making maximum employment, not just full employment, but maximum employment, its number one objective, and promised, unambiguously promised, that it would not get off of zero until it achieved maximum employment. And then it would start thinking about maybe getting off of zero if inflation was 2% or higher. So this was a profound change uh, in the strategy of, uh, of the Fed. And their objective function is maximum employment and higher inflation, which means zero for as far as the eye can see until we get to those two conditions. I, I just wonder, though, Paul, how much power they're going to have. This is not a traditional downturn caused by an overheated economy and then inflation. This is a pandemic. This, to your point, act of God, force majeure, government-mandated shutdowns in many areas. A lot of people are out of work because their workplace has been shut down by the government and the pandemic. What kind of power does the Federal Reserve and monetary policy or fiscal policy from the Treasury have over a virus? I'm glad you said our fiscal policy because it really is a fiscal policy issue going forward, not uh, a Fed policy issue. The Fed's just going to be super accommodate at zero as far as the eye can see. But from the standpoint of getting fiscal transfers to exactly those people you are talking about, that is a issue for Congress. Uh, and there it gets politically messy. Uh, and we've seen that, obviously, for the last uh, five, six months. Uh, but it really is a 
fiscal policy issue going forward of dealing with the dark underbelly of capitalism, which is essentially the lower income group uh, being particularly hit uh, by this event. Uh, so it's really a fiscal policy issue. So you guys are going to have to learn how to talk a lot about politics as opposed to a lot about the Fed. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.